going on guys? Uh, Joey from DJ's Triple D here. Uh, today I'm super excited because I'm going to be coding my 2000, or 2016 Dodge Charger Scat Pack wheels in C-Quartz Deluxe. So as you can read right there, it's, it has uh, hydrophobic and UV proof. So it has hydrophobic properties and it's semi-permanent. So it's not, you know, a lot of times people think about wheel coatings or, you know, paint coatings as being, you know, their one-stop shop and it's a permanent solution and whatever the case may be. So if you're getting those types of promises, uh, I would do a little research prior to uh, paying someone to uh, coat your vehicle. But real quick, let's do an unboxing. So I slit the little tape right here just so it'd be easier on camera. But once you open it up... As you can see in here, most coatings are going to give you a foam block applicator. This one's real nice because it says Car Pro right there on it. And this is a fairly dense foam with a real soft uh, face of the foam right there. So we'll put that down. And then it also, you have the Deluxe itself. So this is your actual ceramic coating. Sorry, it's a pretty warm day here in the southeast. Um, but again, I mean, very similar label to the front of the box. And it's awesome because it's got the little directions right here on the back. And I'll put my step-by-step, -step, uh, I'll actually type it out and everything at the end of the video just in case you had any, uh, any questions. But if you do have any questions, by all means, um, look me up on Facebook. It's the same, same name, DJ's Triple D. Um, shoot me a message on there and I'll get back to you just as quick as I can or drop me a comment below so there's our actual ceramic coating and it's nice because they also give you these suede applicators I mean look at the quality right there right in the bottom portion so you get one two three four of those I'm going to put those, but like I said, the, uh, the directions are also right here on the box itself. Just in case you had any questions, quick reference, which is, uh, I think that's really awesome. So, I've already got the wheels off the car. We're going to do two at a time. Uh, I just pulled them off. I haven't washed the car or the wheels or anything else yet, so we're going to go through the entire process yeah, together. So now, All right. got the wheels off, like I said. Scrubbing both, uh, getting all the junk off of both sides, and uh, just checking over the treads because, as y'all know, I already had to uh, replace this whole wheel and the tire itself. So the tire got replaced due to having a screw in it, kind of right here, but on the inside. It was on this inboard shoulder, and then I um, actually had to get the wheel replaced because the clear coat on it was delaminating. It's a, a known issue with these forged wheels. Um, hopefully Dodge figures out what's going on with it and prevents it from happening in the future, but neither here nor there. So we've got some wheel cleaner and a tire and rubber cleaner. I'm going to go ahead and get the, the tires themselves all scrubbed up. Now normally I spray the, the water, or uh, I spray the wheels down with water, power washer, or just a regular hose just to um, get a lot of that loose junk off. But today, um, we're going to not rinse them down. We're just going to uh, soak them down pretty good with the wheel cleaner, let the tire cleaner sit on it for a few minutes and, and do its thing. And uh, I'm just going to show you on the one wheel uh, throughout the whole process, trying to keep everything relatively quick. I don't want to take up a lot of y'all's time. I know it's precious. And I do appreciate you uh, spending so much time with me and, and watching these videos and, and subscribing and liking and sharing and everything else like that. It really means a lot to you guys. So, um, yeah, well, without further ado, let's go ahead and start on this uh, first wheel over here. And roll out of the way. And it's going to really... the wheel down. 
Now, I'm not a huge proponent for overuse of product. Um, I think a lot of times companies uh, will tell you, hey, you need to use half a bottle on one wheel. To me, that's not logical, nor is it reasonable to tell your customers that. Uh, blast the face down some of it's back there. I'm going to go ahead and get the barrel. Now, I haven't heard of a single wheel cleaner on the market that you can let sit and dry. So that's always a uh, good idea to not let your products dry. And let me go ahead and bring you in real quick. It's right here. See how you can... Sorry, I'm kind of jumpy. See how you can see all this turning purple? That's the ingredients in the wheel cleaner reacting with all the brake dust. Now, now this wheel is a week old. Like I said, I haven't had time to really clean the car down really well um, of late. But as you can see, all this turning colors and everything, and most of your wheel cleaners out there are going to do that. Um, some of them just are not as safe as others and I really enjoy how the uh, Adams products work and I'm I'm looking into some other ones but just so you can see obviously the face of the wheel is not going to be nearly as bad and some of these little pockets right up here you can see it's it's doing its work and I really appreciate that from their products Most of y'all have, have already seen this process. Um, if not, I've got another video um, where I'm working on a Cadillac ATS. Um, and in that video, I, I go into more detail about the whole process. So, if you have any questions, like I said, let me know. As now we have the wheels completely cleaned off, all scrubbed down. Um, the front one, obviously, being after a couple of weeks of not being able to. Uh, get through and wash my car um, is much purpler or much more purple let me use correct English um, but uh, yeah it, it was pretty uh, pretty gross but tires are all clean and scrubbed down on the face and um, the, both the uh, front face of the rim and the barrel itself are both uh, all dried off so now uh, we'll get everything dried down and prep for the coating. Alright, so I don't want to keep going back and forth, you know, turning the tire and everything else because that's just time consuming. So I'm going to take a microfiber rag um, and if you normally if you normally use a drying aid, whether it be you know a spray detailer or you know whatever the case may be, don't do that during you know the prep work for using a ceramic coating because you want the surface to be absolutely naked, absolutely bare, no no waxes, sealants, um, or anything like that on there. So I'm gonna finish wiping this down real quick, and uh, we'll go ahead and fast forward to the actual application of, uh, of the uh, C-Quartz Deluxe. Here we go, we got the Deluxe and uh, the foam block with the microfiber, or uh, excuse me, the suede applicator. So I'm just gonna do one section at a time on the wheel, doing a 
cross hatch, so I'll go long ways and then I'll go up and down, making sure we have good even coverage. The rims are uh, very cool to the touch, and what's really awesome about these little bottles is they have these little stoppers, so as I'm putting it on the applicator, it doesn't gush out, you kind of have to coerce it. So as we're going along, get a good amount in a straight line. All right, and here, we're just gonna go long ways. All the way around, down here in the very bottom. We're closer to the face of the wheel. As it starts to get tacky, you just apply a little bit more. So hopefully you can see that. Rather use more than not enough up here on the edge. And now we'll go up and down. And this just ensures we have good, even, solid coverage over the entire face of the wheel. Now, if you ever notice that you get any contaminants or any dirt or grime or anything in your uh, suede applicator, just make sure you go ahead and switch those out. They give you four of them, like I showed you before, in the kit, just in case that happens. You really shouldn't need that many, especially like I'm doing two of my wheels at the same time, and then once we get done with these, I'll put them back on the car, and... Uh, I'll do the other two. Takes very little. This stuff goes a really long way. Here, along the edge. Make sure we get all that. Okay, so. All right, so there's the back of the wheel. I'm gonna go ahead and put the cap back on because this is a ceramic. That's not anything, that's just sweat. Um, this is a ceramic, so as soon as it starts uh, hitting the air, it's going to start to cure. Now I'm going to do the back of the spokes all the way around, and then I'll flip, or I'll flip the tire or the wheel over and do the face of it as well. And that that's going to get a little more interesting. But um, yeah, essentially that's the whole process. You just go long ways and then up and down. That's your cross hatch. So as we're going up and down, up and down, and then back and forth in, in a motion like that. So just like when we're polishing or compounding or anything else, that crosshatch pattern just really allows everything to uh, get a nice even coat. All right guys, we'll see you in a second. All right guys, real quick, I wanted to show you something. Um, this is not something I do every time, obviously, because we don't have the, uh, the wheels out, but obviously my wheel well is completely filthy and um, I'm going to take advantage of this because I'm going to end up putting a deluxe on the uh, on the brake calipers here. And as you can see, let's see if I can get this in focus. Right up here, this is absolutely filthy. It's got all that brake dust caked on and everything. Now, also, I'm going to take this time to really look around. And you see, I mean, it's just dirt. I mean, it's still a relatively new car. Nothing crazy. Got a couple of rust spots right here on uh, on the control arms and everything like that, but nothing nothing detrimental. All right, so just making sure all my pins are still here and uh, all that good stuff. Now, obviously we're here in the garage, so what I've done is take a little bit of soap in a bottle. It's just, I mean, you can see it in there. It's uh, just soap and water mixed, nice and foamed up right there. So all I'm going to simply do is take my wheel cleaner, give it a good shake, and just spray down the brake caliper. Let it start doing its thing. Get in there now. I've taken my oil changing pan. I mean it's obviously empty, there's no oil in there. But I put that in there just to kind of catch all this gunk. I don't want to stain my I don't want to stain my garage floor 
and I'm going to take this time, like I said, to inspect the brake caliper, make sure everything's good, and then also um, I'm going to take my wheel soap and soak all this down and uh, just try to kind of clean everything up. Um, I'll only do back here on camera so you can see that, but like I said, I'm going to let this kind of agitate for a minute. Got my wheel bucket from outside, brought it in. And while I'm letting all that go, put this down. Now, if it is winter time, you could do this while you're doing your waterless wash. I mean, granted, you're not typically going to pull your wheels off for every wash because that just wouldn't makes sense. Now, I'm not so worried about the rest of the wheel well with the uh, soap and water. But this is also a good time to uh, inspect, especially if you got, you know, your car is a couple years old and, you know, maybe you need to take a look at it and ensure everything's good to go. Um, I learned this process from watching Larry Casilla at uh, Ammo NYC. And it makes a lot of sense. You know, you've already got the you've already got the wheels off, so you might as well inspect everything, just make sure it's good to go. You know, you don't want to ever get surprised by your car. So if you take this time, it takes a few extra minutes. Behind me I've got my wheels. Um, I've got those drying or curing in their initial 10 minute time. So I'm gonna take a few minutes knock all this out real quick, get some of this gunk and crap out of here because um, it's been far too long. So I got my lug nut brush and go through, just kind of give the, the old brake rotors. Now, if, like we talked about in, the, in that Cadillac CTSV video, if you have carbon ceramic rotors, obviously don't do this because that will destroy them. Don't use anything but you know some very gentle car soap. And if you don't know, check your owner's manual. You know, all that information will be in there. But I know for a fact these are good old fashioned iron rotors. I'm just going to give these a quick. Oh, yeah. Check this out. Check all this gunk and junk and everything that's coming off. Oh yeah, I mean these are performance brake rotors and calipers, so I expected to have all this craziness coming off, and that's a big reason for the the bucket getting that. Now I'm gonna go all the way back here, get the whole rotor clean because we're gonna do the ceramic coating on the whole rotor. So as I'm doing it, I'm sorry for the shaky video. I'm holding the camera and doing all that, trying to get in here and all these little nooks and crannies because I want to make sure everything is nice and clean. Everything is going to get coated. And this is, I don't know why, this is so satisfying. I love it. All right, I think that's pretty good. Give the old lug nut brush a quick rinse. Come through and do all the shock strut. Just making sure everything is still good. Go through, give this a quick brush. Again, I'm sorry for the shaky video, you guys. Everything down here in the little air duct. Good, good, good. Loving it. Absolutely loving it. Now, if you notice right here, it's very sudsy vice right here where it's not so much. Um, that's because there's this carpeting, and manufacturers do that so they can help with the noise, road noise, and everything else. Because in normal, granted, yes, this is a performance vehicle, but I love bragging about that. I'm sorry. Not sorry. Um, you know, it's one of those things where you still don't want to be cruising down the road listening to 
your tires and all the craziness that happens on, on the road, you want to be able to listen to your music or whatever your fancy is. So this carpet just kind of adds a layer of difficulty when it comes to cleaning everything out. All right, so that looks really good. I'm going to go ahead and get the hose, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, guys and gals. Uh, so now I have given my wheels the requisite 10-minute uh, dwell time. And uh, during that time, we were going over the... Um, the wheel wells and the, and the brake calipers and everything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe. I've already wiped the first one down. I'm going to go ahead and wipe the second one down. And then um, all I'm going to do is simply take uh, some of Adam's paint sealant, because these are painted and clear coated wheels, uh, and throw some of that on top of it here, probably in about an hour. Um, that's just going to help with the overall uh, protection. I love layers of protection. I want to put as many layers between my wheels and my, my paint and the elements themselves, especially when it comes to your wheels because they get beat up so much. So what we're going to simply do, like I said, we've got the uh, sealant, on, or uh, excuse me, the uh, Deluxe has had its, its 10 minutes, so let's go ahead and wipe these down. And you're going to notice if you're doing this um, for the first time, it, it feels different than you know, a normal sealant or a wax because, well, frankly, it's not a normal sealant and or wax. So I'm going to go through real quick, wipe the face of each spoke. And this is just my process. You do it whatever way makes sense for you. Um, this just keeps me honest and uh, I'm able to keep track of it this way. So as you're wiping, you're gonna feel initially a little bit of uh, resistance, and it's gonna get very slick. And that's how you know that uh, it's, it's had its cure time, and it's ready to, ooh, bad, I had a bad day. Uh, it's ready to protect your wheels. Again, just going over the face of each spoke, all the way around, and we go in. You really want to kind of massage it in the last little bit. You want to get all the uh, that top layer, that sacrificial layer, if you will. You want to get that off so that it has no interference with the bonding of the product. Much faster in the future. To me, that's that's what I'm all about. Now the face is done. We come back here to the barrel and take a uh, flip your, your microfiber over. And like I said, for the removal of this, I don't know if y'all can see this. This is a very low pile microfiber towel. I don't, I don't want anything crazy. Uh, really plush, real high, sticking up. I want to keep them, you know, the the lower nap or pile height of this rag is really going to help me grab all that uh, ceramic coating and really get it up. So I'm not sitting here fighting it all afternoon. He's going through buffing this off. Pulling all that up all the way around every little section. Make sure you get all of it off. If it sits there, uh, from my understanding, it really degrades the performance of it and the longevity and the hydrophobicity, I believe that's a word, the hydrophobic properties of it, which I'm assuming is the reason most people that use this, that's why. And I know my camera's not going to pick it up, but as I'm looking through, you can see it, it looks very wet. Um, and this deluxe ceramic, really allows you to see the difference of where you've already wiped and what's still left. So that helps in the removal process. Uh, coat your wheels or, or if this is a, uh, a service you're going to start providing, you know, do right by your customers, do right by yourselves. 
and uh, there we go. Now our wheels are coated. I'm going to clean that back brake rotor real quick, throw some uh, some deluxe on both of the brake calipers, and let that dry and cure and go through its time. Same process, same exact process as the uh, as the wheels. Take the uh, micro or suede microfiber uh, applicator and the uh, foam block that it comes with. Rub it on, get in all the little nooks and crannies, and then go from there. Now, I'm not gonna spray these down and, and show you how the hydrophobic properties work because you're supposed to let them cure. It's not supposed to rain today, so I'm not really worried about that. But uh, I do have to go pick up my little one here in a little bit. And uh, I want to make sure that these are all good. You know, I see a spot. But, um, yeah, like I said, if, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, you guys and gals, um, so I know we have some, some ladies out there that really love their cars, and, and I, I love that. That's what I love about the car community. In my area, you know, there's, there's men and women. And uh, one thing I'll show you real quick, and then we'll uh, go ahead and wrap this video up. But here's your, your foam block. I just took a little elastic band around the length of it. And it just really helps me hold the suede to the applicator. So if you have a rubber band or you know, some sort of elastic band that you can, you can get on there, it really helps. So uh, like I said, if you have any questions over this process, look me up on Facebook. It's DJ's Triple D. And um, you know, I'm also on... The Dodge Charger Community Facebook page. It's where my shirt comes from. Uh, you know, shameless plug. But uh, I'm on there. I'm on Detailing Buddies, uh, Detailing for Dummies. Uh, I'm on all those pages. So if you have any questions whatsoever, do not hesitate to uh, to shoot me a message or, or DM or PM or what whatever you call it. Um, and, uh, and I, love, I love talking about this stuff. So if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you again so much for watching. If, uh, if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. If you're kind of on the fence, please give me the, the benefit of the doubt. Hopefully I can continue bringing uh, great material. I know this is a little bit longer video, but I wanted to really make sure we, we covered all the specifics because I couldn't find anything that really laid it out and the instructions. Um, so again, if you have any questions, let me know. I know I've said that like 15 times, but I can't say it enough. I love talking about this stuff, and thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your time. I know it's valuable. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Take it easy.